Now against the Lord near, and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Fear. What is fear? Fear is poison imagination. Yeah. I don't fear the people of the land. I don't fear the local politicians. I don't fear the Republicans nor the Democrats. I don't fear Obama. I don't fear Romney. I don't fear anybody in Washington, D.C. Why? Because they are not my source. Amen. My source transcends denomination. It ain't coming out of Cleveland. When Jesus comes, he's not going to ride through Cleveland to come get me. He's not going to come in from the eastern south. <laughs> says, do not fear the people, for they are bread for us. They're bread for us. I'll tell you something. God has given us the land. That's right. Now what are we going to do with it? You see, we can be like many Christians. We can get right up close. We can look at it. We can almost touch it, but we're just satisfied right there. Come on. You see, if you're going to if you're going to possess the promise, it's going to take milking some cows. It's going to take some hard work. <coughs> can I just get on my soapbox for a few moments? It's going to take getting up an hour early and getting to Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to call for the poor worst about this. We will show up for an hour and have a holy dance and swing from the chandeliers and have a good old time and on Monday morning all hell is broke loose against us. <laughs> I told the church this morning, we got to quit living in defense. Oh, I'm getting up and, and oh Lord, I've got to run hard. The enemy's going to get me today. Just, and we wear ourselves out. You know I don't run from him. Where in the Bible does it say, does it say we're supposed to run from the enemy? You know, I live in offense. And my attitude is when I put my feet on the floor in the morning, the enemy, are all of hell should be going, oh, God, he's away again. That's right. Why? Right. Because God has given us the power to push back the gates of hell and to possess what he has given us. That's right. That's a promise. Won't somebody come to place off? He's giving us a promise. We can be positioned on the outside and poisoned on the inside. Man. So many Christians, they get right to their promise and they're satisfied. Just look at it. If I could just touch my promise, I don't need to possess it. If I could just touch it every now and then, look at it. I'll tell you something. you got to possess the promise. Possess the promise. Amen. I begin to think, how, how can I tie this in? with the world missions thing. That, and here's what the Lord showed me this afternoon. The Lord said somebody had to get over in that land and minister to those people. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to win the woolly boogers over. <coughs> I, I would imagine, and again, it's my translation, that once they possessed the land, there was the first woolly booger church. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was a missionary to them. I'll tell you something. God is giving you a promise. Let me ask you, what are you doing to possess your promise? What are you doing to possess your promise? What are you doing to win the land? You know, many times we come to church and we're, we're just satisfied. We just come to church and, 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 and keep the lights on and have a good old time on Sunday. And, and we, we become the, a part of the Gospel Glorious Club. We're a good social club. We, we love each other. But God's called us more than loving each other. Amen. And God wants us to get out of the four walls and, and win the loss. Make an impact in our community. Make an impact in our world. Are you possessing the land? Are you possessing the God's given some of you promises tonight. 
God's promised some of you right next to our promise, getting oh so close and looking at it, but never possessing it. God help us to possess our promise.